the Women's Business Center. Your first step to success. Let me ask you, there's a lot of now social media, everything's on the web, everything's on the internet. We were talking earlier about a LinkedIn profile and you made, you said, I want to know who I'm, who I'm dealing with and who's getting to know me. How do you, how has that changed um, in your life from the past to now? How has it affected you? Well, I'm probably coming into the social media with a little bit more jaundice than some people because I've been in public life. And so I understand, you know, the rigors of, you know, people putting things on uh, the web that may not be, you know, totally truthful and honest. So I am less uh, engaged in doing it. And I also have a tremendous uh, reservoir and network of people already. I mean, people that I want to do business with, I'm able to pick up the phone and call. I'm always eager to meet new people. I'm particularly excited to be here in Texas. I've been in Texas now for three days, and I just feel the energy is <laughs> bubbling out of me. If I don't appear to be energetic, it's simply because I'm a little tired and perhaps so. Jeff, <laughs> I've had about three hours of sleep in the last three days, but uh, it, 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 it will all amount to a tremendous, I think, burst of, of uh, results when, when I get back to, to my business. I've shared some of the uh, names of people and their and their backgrounds. It's so it's so exciting to be out of DC and to see real people and to see the activities and the interest and the passion that people are bringing towards their business. I have been remarkably impressed by the uh, stature and the quality of the um, preparation that women in Texas are bringing uh, to their business. And I was at the airport today, flying from Austin down here, and I picked up a, a, a little uh, a plaque that says, don't mess with Texas. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and that is going to be my new thing. I'm going to put it on my office uh, door. And so when people come in, they will understand they are getting the real Texas woman. You know, I, if I can borrow some of your sanctity, and if you don't think of me as an imposter in doing that, but I just love the attitude because it's an attitude that you're a warrior, that you know that you have a, a place and a presence. And I think that women have to feel that they can accomplish what they begin. Um, Dr. Kono, earlier we were like, for example, at the Women Business Center. We um, you know, we see a lot of people that come through that through the doors, and some we can help, some we can't help, and. Sometimes I feel so sad because there is so much potential wasted because of funding, lack of funding. So what do you think that we can do to solve that issue? Well, you know, that's why I incompletely perhaps answered your question about why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Um, we have created uh, a, a company. Uh, I am uh, a founder of a company and CEO of a company called STEM Excel. Uh, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And Excel is mean that you, it, it, you, know, you were exceeding expectations. And we founded it with the idea of it being an online educational forum that's interactive for not only students in high school and early college, but for women. Because I am passionate about getting women to do business well. And I think that we have a, a tremendous goal here, and I think you would agree that there are people who enter into business thinking that they can succeed without understanding how challenging it's going to be. And they therefore actually uh, create a problem for those women who are well prepared because bankers, many of them, and unfortunately many investors today, still are hesitant to invest uh, or lend to a woman-owned business. I personally don't understand the bias because I'm using statistics in my remarks tonight that show you're more likely to be a successful investor or a successful banker if you invest in a woman-owned firm because women-owned firms are outperforming male-oriented firms. Let me again state that for the audience. <laughs> women-owned firms are outperforming male firms and you can send your, your tomatoes at the screen, those males who are, who are watching this, but that is a given fact based on a Wall Street Journal, Dow Jones International Survey, and I couldn't be prouder of the fact that women are at that point. I think it's because women take less risk. We are more risk adverse than men uh, because we tend to stage our businesses more slowly. 
oftentimes we're balancing children and uh, a business at the same time. So we don't have these outsized ambitions about you know taking over the world and becoming the one, number one competitor in our in our uh, sector. And because of that, I think women are less likely to fail. I think women also have something that it, in, in spades, and that is the ability to be transparent and to collaborate. And those two, those two qualities, transparency and collaboration, are so important in business. You know, it was really interesting earlier when we were talking, you made some comments and you said Brazil has an America a woman president. Um, what, what were some of the other countries that you mentioned that have Brazil, Argentina, uh, you know, uh, and Costa Rica had and Peru had, yes. And here, yet in the Valley, we, or in, or in the United States, I should say, we can't even get paid equal pay to, to a man. But do you think that will be resolved, or do you see any solution to that other than advocacy and, and trying to get other women involved to start making more points? Well, and I think it's not only getting women involved, and I speak to the men in the audience, I think the men have as much at risk here as the women because women are your partners in your marriage or your relationship and you are hurt just as much as the woman when she is paid 77 cents on the dollar. That means that you are leaving on the table 23 cents uh, of every paycheck she brings home that should be in your family bank account. So men, you are getting hurt as well as the women. And for families that have girls, you may not worry about it if your wife isn't working, but your daughter is going to be working. And you do not want that 77 cents on the dollar to remain the constant when your daughter has graduated and has moved on to a potential career. And to answer your question of why it's happening, I think it's happening in large measure, and maybe I can, this is from personal experience, because women are taking a larger role in the home. They are more involved in raising the children and engaged in family matters, and so many women, just out of reality, step back from their careers. They take time off when they have children. They are, are the people who take early hours. They leave the you know the job early because they have to get home for the nanny or you know the babysitter. So they're burning candles, so to speak, at both ends. Now, in, in an imbalanced environment where the man is as active as the wife at home and does bring the child to the doctor's appointment and does pick up the child at school when the child is sick and does do some of the grocery shopping on the way home from work, then the woman is going to have the energy and the focus to stay more concentrated in her business, whether it's an independent business as a small business woman or it's a business in a, in a corporate environment. So then we can challenge the reality of 77 cents on the dollar. But women are in many ways carrying a burden which is difficult to handle in the workplace.